Lord Jesus, would you please bless our time in your word? Would you remind us of things that we need to know? Would you show us the things that we uh, don't have? Would you please um, nourish us and strengthen us and, and change us by the power of your word? We, we, we have no place else to go. You have the words of life. Open our heart to your word and open your word to our hearts as we pour ourselves into your word. Please, please pour your word into our hearts. Baptize us in your word tonight. We ask it in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Continuing to go through the Psalms, I will be redundant as I say. The Psalms are ideas and thoughts. They're literally prayers. If you're going through something in life and you don't know how to pray about it, find your Psalm and pray it. David and all the writers of the Psalms went through the hardest of times so that God can get the best out of them. And I think that's so important for us to remember. When we're going through the hardest of times, don't ask yourself why God's punishing me. What did I do? Why is there uh, this going on in my life? Ask God to get the most out of you during this time. Because all we're ever going to do is go out of trials and come into trials. And go out of trials and come into trials. And if you've got a couple weeks breather in between, be thankful about it. No, that is coming again. And you're not being punished. On the contrary, was David being punished when he wrote these psalms? I mean, think about the, the mental state that he was at. Some of us, we get so down in the valley, man. We're just, just waiting for somebody to push us off so we can get down into this pit of despair and self-pity and depression. And, and, and God, he threw David down into these pits and then threw him a line and pulled him up out of them so that David would bleed all over a page. Think about that a second. David went through these things. We're going to read the Psalms of David today. Some more Psalms that David wrote. And he went through these things just so we could have comfort when we go through these things. Just so we could comfort others with the same comfort that we're given. Amen? Amen? Verse 1, chapter 26, David telling God, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Please give me your attention. David is going through something. And like so many of us, as he's going through something, he's absolutely sure that he's going through it for no reason. I didn't do nothing. Why am I going through this? I didn't do nothing. Why is this happening to me? Why am I losing money? Why am I fighting with my spouse? Why, am I, why is my job going bad? Why is my health? What am I doing? And, and God is looking up. God is looking down at David and he's saying, you didn't do nothing wrong. I only bless those that I trust the most with the hardest of trials. Did I have to say that again? I only bless those with the hardest of trials, those who I trust the most. Now, I don't know about you, that's not a great comfort. But what it is, is a truth that will set you free. It's a truth that will transform you. It's a, it's, a, um, it's a pause. God, I've, I've, I've said this before, God looks down from heaven and he says, I've got a gift that I have to give somebody. But it's got to be somebody I really trust. Somebody that loves me with all their heart. And in that package of a gift, it might be divorce. It might be cancer. It might be the death of a child. It might be the worst, whatever the worst thing you could imagine in your life is. And God says, I'm looking for somebody 
to give this to. Hey, you can feel free to, to um, interpret everything I say to him, because I, I can see that my man needs a word. Feel free to sit next to him, and I, it don't distract me one bit. I know, I said, I'm serious. It don't distract me one bit. I don't know what I'm going to say half the time anyway, so it don't matter. So you could tell him everything I'm saying in the hopes that God will speak to him. I'm here for him. I want him to receive a word. I've been seeing how heavy his spirit is. And I don't want to be the first one in that line to say, yeah, God, I'll take cancer. Yeah, God, I'll take divorce. Yeah, God, I'll take death. I don't want to be in that line. But knowing that God trusts me enough that he would give that to me, this is a great comfort because there's an old saying that God doesn't take from you anything that he doesn't give back better, whether it's here or heaven. And David's trying to say, God, what did I do? And God is trying to say, you didn't do nothing. But there's going to be millions of people that are going to read, billions of people that are going to read what you write and be comforted. Examine me, verse 2, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with idolatry idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Do you know how many people I know that are mad at God? The vast majority of the people that I know, now not everyone, but the vast majority of the people I know that don't believe in God are lying. They believe in God, they're just mad at God. God did something they didn't like. Why did she do this? Why did he do this? Why did, why did God allow this to happen? If God loves me so much, then why? I understand that. I have a lot of those. If God is so powerful, why didn't he make me stop before I did this? Why did I do this? Why did God let me do this? Why, 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 why? David's on the cusp of breaking out into that same pity. Guys, I don't know what the worst thing you could imagine. Some of you guys understand. Some of you guys, the older folks, have kids that have been on drugs, that have done heinous things, that have robbed your house, have stolen your money. Some of you guys have kids that have done that. Well, you know what my kids have done? When my son was two years old, he pooped in his diaper. What are you trying to say, Ryan? That's all God sits up and does, is any mess that your kid makes, any mess that you make, it's just like poop in the diaper. I can change that. I can clean that. It's no big deal. To think, to understand that, God is not punishing you. God doesn't punish you. You punish yourself, absolutely. But he's not punishing you. Oh, that's it. I didn't know you were going to do that. It's over now. I'm taking away all your blessings. That's it. He don't do that. And you need to give yourself a break. You know why? God is good. And all the time. In the valley, God is good. On the mountain, God is good. In sickness, God is good. In health, God is good. God is good when you got money. God is good when you don't have money. God is good. God is good, meaning somehow, some way, he's going to take the worst things that happen in your life and turn them out to be great in the end. For all things work together for the good. I hated the assembly of the evildoers again, verse 5, and will not sit with the wicked. 6. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. 
Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Let me tell you what David's saying there. He's saying, thanks a lot, God. (laughs) Gracias a Dios para mi vivo es loco. Gracias a Dios para mi vida loca. And that's called the sacrifice of thanksgiving, which is what we offer to God with our lips. The sacrifice of thanksgiving. Thank you, God. We used to say, uh, what was that, uh, that movie? Thank you, sir, may I have another? Yeah, I didn't want to say it. Forget everything else about that movie except that line. And he says, and I went to church anyway. I went to temple anyway. I didn't care how mad I was at my husband. I didn't care how mad I was at my kid. I didn't care how mad I was at my mother or father. I went to church anyway, and I looked up at God and I said, thank you. Life sucks. Thank you. Thank you. Strategy number one of the enemy. He wants to tell you you're alone. He wants to keep you from the house of God. And he wants to tell you that God's mad at you. Don't you know that? God is not mad at you. You're not alone. No temptation has seized you except such as common to man, the Bible says. You're not alone. You're not. You're not the craziest one on planet Earth. You might think you are. Your husband might tell you you are. But you're not. There's lots of women just as crazy as you. Can't do nothing now. I'm I'm up here. She'll beat me later. (laughs) Do not gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hand is a sinister scheme, and whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My foot stands in an even place in the congregations. I will bless the Lord. And the last thing he says that he illustrates really clearly, I don't care what you do. I don't care. It was one of the greatest lines in the entire Bible. I love it. It's from the book of Job. He looks up at God and he says, Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Oh my goodness. I want you to think about what happened with Job for a second. Covered in boils, loss of his children. I mean, nobody has gone through anything that Job... Nobody here could even, for a second, say, well, yeah, I know exactly how Job feels. No, you don't. He lost his money. He lost his children. His wife said to him, curse God and die. And his response to that was to look up to God and say, though you slay me, yet I will trust you. Boy, am I a little girl. God forgot me. Every time I get upset, every time I get mad, every time I get hurt, every time I sin and walk away, God God doesn't love me anymore. I don't blame him. And I love the way Psalm 27 kind of uh, shiplaps with Psalm 26. The Lord, verse 1, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Somebody say, Amen, that's all I needed. All right, everybody say amen. Amen. That's all I needed. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? My boss? My ex? Some disease? Some event in the past? Some worry about the future? The Lord's my light, my salvation. How many of you guys are afraid of the dark? Don't tell me. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? 
I'm afraid of the dark. Now, I'm, I'm courageous. I fight it. I don't, I, don't like, I don't freak out when it gets dark, but I don't like the dark. I, I turn all the lights on. When I go into a house by myself, I don't like dark rooms. They kind of freak me out a little bit. The air conditioner turns on and the air goes through the vents and I'm just like, what the? I don't like the dark. Spiritual dark either. When you sin and you do something you know you shouldn't have done and all of a sudden you don't feel the presence of the Lord there. When you've done something, you're like, God is going to kick my butt any second. I know it. I deserve it. I did it. Absolutely. And all you need to do is recite, proclaim, speak out the first verse of Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. You guys, Psalm 27 is not reaching down, it's reaching up. I want you to understand that. We, we spoke this a couple of months ago. Um, we read about all these things. God's going to shield me. God's going to protect me. God's going to keep me safe. God's not going to let this happen. God's not going to let that happen. But yet, these things happen anyway, don't they? It's like either this is wrong or my mentality is wrong. And I'm going to tell you it's your mentality that's wrong. It's my mentality. David's already in the valley. He's proclaiming the goodness of God, proclaiming the sovereignty of God, proclaiming the rescue of God, proclaiming the salvation of God, proclaiming the, the light of God in the valley, from the bottom. You're going to do this. I believe it. You've done it before. You're going to do it again. Now, please keep in mind, David was not just the king. He was a commander. What does that mean? Listen, David really had people trying to kill him. Now, maybe your boss is more powerful than, I don't know. Maybe your spouse is more dangerous than, I don't know. But David's, David's plight was real. It wasn't the electricity getting turned off. It wasn't the water getting shut down. It wasn't the mortgage company sending him a bill. It was somebody coming into his room in the middle of the night and sinking a sword through his heart because they wanted his kingdom. Anybody ever think about that? I think about Donald Trump a lot. I think to myself, all the hate that they throw out this guy. There are these crazy people out there that just want to kill this dude. And yet he walks on stage in front of thousands of people, and I think to myself, man, that guy is so brave. <laughs> Stupid people. <you> know? <laughs> and I think to myself, man, how many of you guys could sleep at night if, hey, listen to me. I want you to realize this. Every single person on the planet Earth knows Donald Trump and has an opinion about him. And I'd say half or more than half hate his guts. If you worry because your coworker, your fellow student at school, your ex-husband from years ago your, hates you, and you can't sleep at night because of it. David, he just, he blocked off everything 
and just went, you are my light and my salvation. You're the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies came to eat my flesh up, you rescued me and you will continue. You hide me in the secret place of your pavilion. You hide me in the shadow of your... Th over and over. He, and, and just everything else was blocked out. Is that a gift or a talent? Or is that just real faith? Hey guys, you know what David knew about Jesus Christ? Nothing. He had a promise of Messiah. Yeah, I heard there's going to be somebody coming. You guys know the story about when, when it was revealed to him that Messiah would come from his bloodline? David, who wrote, some say over 100 Psalms, who victory upon victory, whom God rescued over and over again, who never was at a loss for words, never at a loss for wisdom, the prophet came to David and said to David, Messiah is going to come from your bloodline. And you know what he went? He went, Me? He only knew Old Testament. He only didn't even know Old Testament. He only knew the Torah. And this guy had this relationship. And he said, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his temple. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Out of a promise. This is before he got rescued, guys. He said, look what he said. Just what we sang tonight. Good job, Drew. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. I won't walk to you, I'll run. Hey, do you know who God says, seek my face to? Only his favorite. All of you, you're his favorite. I'm his favorite. He says to you, I want to know you intimately. And I want you to know me intimately. This is the word. It's my flesh. It covers everything that I am. If you want to know about me, seek me. Read this book. If you miss reading this book this morning, what the heck are you thinking? Are you crazy? The God of all creation wrote a book, and it has your name on the cover. Literally. You can find yourself in the Word. You can, you can, you can know God intimately, and He can know you intimately. While you read the word, it reads you. While you speak to God, he speaks to you. And you're mad at God? And you avoid God? I can't wait for tomorrow morning. I don't know what God's going to say to me tomorrow morning. I know what he said to me this morning. He spoke a word to me this morning. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I've read... Proverbs chapter 11, I don't know, hundreds of times. Today's the 11th, right? And I saw it said something about the faithful will escape problems, but the unfaithful, the righteous will escape from trouble, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. And I read that this morning, and for the first time I, I, I saw, I'm seeing things. And it, it, he, God said, Ryan, it, it's not that you're not going to lust. You're going to have lust in your heart, but you're going to have an escape from it. I'm going to give you just enough strength to overcome it. 
so that you're not caught by it. Like, like you don't lust any less. And that, I think that kept me from the Lord for a long time. It keeps a lot of you guys from thinking this thing's real. Some of you guys, uh, and I, I don't, no guy wants to think about a sister like this, so I'm not even going to mention you all. Just make believe you're not here. <laughs> Some of you guys don't think that God is real because you still live with all this lust in your heart, everything that's in your eye, everything that's in your mind. You can't, meet, you can't even have a conversation with a woman without some crazy thought in your head. It, it's the worst thing in the world. And you think, yeah, if I was really saved, I wouldn't feel that. I wouldn't think that. I wouldn't act like that. And God spoke to me this morning. He said, nobody told you you weren't going to lust. I just told you you won't get caught in your lust. I'll give you enough strength. I'm going to rescue you. Like, God, I wish, you know how many times I've sat there on the cusp of, of, of life and death? Why do I still think such horrible thoughts, like, all the time? And you know what God's answer is? Just so you'll be just like where you are right now. Just so you'll constantly be asking why. Just so you'll still be low enough to say, why am I so low? Now, you ladies that are here, I'm not talking about your husbands. That's somebody else. <laughs> when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Before I read verse 10, let me tell you something. How many times has God rescued anybody? Anybody here want to raise their hand and say, God's rescued you out of a lot of problems? Then why is it every time we have the next problem, we wonder when God's going to show up, if God's going to show up? How many problems does he rescue us out of that every single new problem is like, I know God can rescue me out of the last one, but this new one is too hard for him. I don't deserve it this time. No, no, that, God's forgot about me. He must be worrying about the coronavirus or something. <laughs> David said, verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. Oh my goodness. I grew up my mother and father were everything to me. Oh my goodness, did we love each other. My family was so tight. Uh, I, I don't know what culture you come from, but like I kissed my father on the lips the day he died. Every time I seen him. I, that's just the way we grew up. We, you know, my mother would do things as, as a young teenager, like, like some of you guys are like, your mother's still doing that for you? Like, she really loved me. <laughs> I remember talking one time, and you telling me that when your boys came in town, they'd sleep in your bed. That's just, that's the, the culture we were in. Of course. I'd go through New York, and I'd see my parents. Sleep. What are you talking about? Come on. They'd call and ask. We knocked on the door. Hey, I'm home. Oh, sit down. I'll feed you. Don't worry. What are you doing? How long are you in town for? When are you going to leave? Good or bad? But to know that when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. Wow. Could I... Let me explain that to you young people. It's not when your mother and father just forsake you like they turn their back on you. It's like when they screw up. God's got you. Yeah, I know your parents ain't been perfect, but God's perfect. And we need to stop, some of us younger Christians maybe, you need to stop putting the, the bad um, characteristics that your parents had on God. I love that one scene in the movie um, Jurassic Park. 
you remember when the lawyer leaves the kids in the car and the, and the, and the monster comes, the, the dinosaur comes and tries, and the kid's like freaking out, and he's like, oh, he left us, he left us, he left us, and the guy like grabs their face, and he makes them look at him, and he goes, but that's not what I'm going to do. I love that. And that's what God does when parents forsake. But that's not what I'm going to do. I love that about God. I do. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hey, verse 13 is a curveball, guys. Verse 13 is a curveball. We often think of dying and death is the, the fine. Hey, listen, in heaven, God will sell it up in heaven. God will fi finish it in heaven. God, I know God's good, and when I get to heaven, I'll worry about it. But that's not what God says. That's not what his word. You know, hear what he says here? Guys, here's the promise. I'm not just making it better in heaven. I'm going to take care of it on earth. David says, I'd have lost heart if I wouldn't have believed that I would see the goodness of God on earth, in the land of the living. It's not this burden you have to carry all the way Till I, if you've lost something, if you've suffered loss, if the death of a, a parent, the death of a child, if, if, if you've, something's been taken from you, your health, your wealth, God says, we're not talking heaven. Earth. I'm going to square this up on earth. Before I see you, things will get better. These are great promises. I hope you guys are carrying these. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 28, verse 1. This is the last one we'll cover tonight. To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. This is the first time in the Bible that God is referred to as a rock. You guys ever sing that song? All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. If you've been given a promise by man or woman, if you've been given a hope by a boss that didn't come to pass, if you thought that, did, did anybody know who Jim Ryan is? Anybody hear that name? You older folk might remember Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan was one of the original advocates for jogging. Like, like I remember growing up, and Jim Ryan was, he was like this, he's, he, you got to run. He's on TV, you got to run. Running is this, running is this. Important to run. He was the first, he was like Mr., he was almost like Jack LaLanne. He was in that generation. Do you remember Jim Ryan? Jim Ryan died while running. He was running, had a heart attack, and died. I don't care how much you work out. I don't care how good you eat. I don't care if you never smoke a day in his life. You guys remember Tony? You guys don't remember Tony Musabe. Some of you guys don't, weren't here that long. Remember Tony Musabe, right? Tony Musabe never smoked a day in his life. Loved the Lord. Died of lung cancer. Until the day he died, till the day before he went home to see the Lord face to face, all he did was walk around telling people how much Jesus loved him. And he didn't bemoan. I never heard him say one time, why God? He just said, thank you, God. Kids, people have it worse. There's kids dying. People have it worse than me. To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me. Lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Real quick, 
I don't know how your worship is. Some people worship like this. Some people worship like this. Some people sit down worship. In Scripture, over and over again, lift your hands in the sanctuary to God. It's so good for your soul. It's like complete surrender. It's like the waving of a white flag. I quit. I'm nothing. I have nothing. I've been nothing. I never did anything. You, you proclaim that he's your God of nothing. You are nothing apart from God. You've accomplished nothing. You'll, do, you'll never be anything apart from God. I don't care what it is that you strive for, look toward. He's my God. Here. Here, here's, you know what I have to offer you? What's in my hands now? Nothing. You know what I've ever done for you? What's in my hands now? Nothing. And yet God gives us everything. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands and render to them what they deserve because they do not regard the works of the Lord nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Listen, this is really weird. This is a part of Scripture that causes people to stumble. Remember that the Psalms is not a book of doctrine. It's a book of poetry. And some people dismiss the Bible because it's poetry. Some people, ah, the Bible's poetry. Yeah, but that makes it all the more. Poetry is important to God. Have you ever read a... Have, I know some of you guys here, in, in the hopes of, of getting with that best girl that you dreamed of, wrote her poetry. You only write poetry... You only reveal that part of your life to the people you love the most. So when you write poetry to God, when David wrote poetry to God, he wasn't dismissing this poetry. But here's also what David did here. He told God he was pretty upset at the people that were trying to hurt him. So the reason I said it's not doctrine, it's poetry, he was kind of telling God, you know what, God? I don't care if you smash my enemies. I don't care if they die and they go to hell. I don't care about them one bit. Now, it's not saying that that's the right heart to have. Don't go taking your enemies to God and go, God, I want you to take uh, George and, and, and burn him in hell and, and rip his feet off, too. That's what I want you to do. wasn't saying that. This wasn't the, the nicest thing in the world for David to write. But here's one thing David was doing. He was giving God the truth of what was in his heart. You know the, the word for confession? The, the, the real, um, the best interpretation of the word confession is the word harmony. It's the agreement with God that what you are doing is wrong, not in his eyes, but in your eyes also. When you confess to God you're harmonizing with God that, God, I know you know anyway, and I just want to admit with you at least that that was wrong. And at the very least, David here isn't making, well, no, I, 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 don't, I don't hate anybody. I hate a lot of people, actually. And I give that to God. God, I don't want, I don't want to hate this person anymore, and I hate them, so please take it from me. So there's a, a whisper of this here. You guys see it? Okay, I'm going to roll. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength. And he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. And David not only prayed for himself, he prayed for others. Been a lot of emotion tonight. Let's leave it there. Close your Bible. Remember, for every sigh, there's a psalm. 
The Psalms were written and given. It's the biggest book in the Bible. There's 150 Psalms. And they were given so that we can search them, find out what ails us, and give it to the Lord Wow, I didn't know I could say that to God. I didn't know I was allowed to say that to God. I didn't know God knew this. I didn't know David did this. I didn't know. And when you understand who David was, that he murdered men, he plotted against them, he turned his back on God numerous times for long periods of time, and you see that he wrote those things, you could actually look back at yourself one time and say, you know what? If God could still love David, then God can still love me. Right? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for the Psalms. Continue to bless us through them. May the emotions and the love and the pain and the hurt, may we be able to relate it and leave them at the foot of the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy and grace upon us. May our heart retain the things that you want it to, God. May our heart retain them, God. I pray that somebody received a word tonight. Maybe it was see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Maybe it was when you said, seek my face. Hey, before I finish, Drew, can you please come up and do that song again? It really ministered to my heart, and I'd love to just, I won't walk to you, I'll run. Just, let's just close in a, in a song of worship, all right? You can say amen to the Lord in your heart, and then, and then just, I just want him to. There's a craving in my heart And it's aiming straight at you There's a yearning in my soul I think it's meant for you too I hear you say Come seek my face I won't walk to you, I'll run I won't walk to you, I'll run Like a blind man who finally sees I won't walk to you, I'll run I won't walk to you, I'll run I won't walk to you, won't walk to you, I'll run There's a longing in my mind Lord, I'm desperate to know Just how close that we can get along Just how deep that we can go I hear you say Come seek my face I won't walk to you, I'll run. I 
I'll walk to you, I'll run like a blind man who finds his sins. I'll walk to you, I'll run, I'll walk to you, I'll run. I'll walk to you, I'll walk to you, I'll run. If I don't feel free, but you say I'm free, I will call my heart a liar, trust you more than me. And if I don't feel clean, but you say I'm clean, I will call my heart a liar, trust you more than me. If I don't feel free, but you say I'm free And I will call my heart a liar Trust you more than me And if I don't feel clean But you say I'm clean And I will call my heart a liar Trust you more than me I hear you say Come seek my face I won't walk to you, I'll run I won't walk to you, I'll run Like a blind man who finally sees I won't walk to you, I'll run I won't walk to you, I'll run I won't walk to you, won't walk to you, I'll run I won't walk to you, I'll run 